Hey guys, it's me again. This is my uh, final recap talking to myself video. I should do something kind of interactive at some point this week, maybe Friday, maybe Feedback Friday, to um, do some interactive discussion with you guys about E3, see what you thought, let it settle in. So that'll be Friday, I think. I've decided this now. Yay. Um, throat's still a bit sore, part because I didn't sleep very much last night. Uh, um, but I want to talk to you today about the Nintendo presser, as it was, and then the Devol Devolver Digital stuff, because I did miss that. I went back and watched that this morning, and both of them were pretty short, so I should be able to get them fairly concise. Huh, me, concise. Famous last words. Right. Don't hold your breath. Uh, let's start with Nintendo. Um, lighter than I expected. Uh, E3 is not the most important show for Nintendo, so don't be too critical on them because they do have that Mario and Rabbids game that I think is going to be doing very, very well. And Mario Odyssey looks very creative. The idea is interesting. It's that straight up Nintendo thing of you take the Mario characters, you create an innovative gameplay mechanic or system of gameplay mechanics, and you tell the same old story. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, there, there's been a, 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 dis, you know, a, a disturbance of the force with the whole Peach and Bowser and marriage and all that stuff. I, I hope it doesn't bring back um, the FF beast, but... Uh, um, it looks cute. It looks interesting. It looks like it's a different sort of platforming skill set. So, consider me interested. Um, the, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC stuff, uh, I had trouble being interested in because I haven't been able to play Breath of the Wild, the, the base game, yet. So that's just a personal thing. Um... Pokemon, the Pokemon RPG is going to make so much money when it comes out. It doesn't even have to be good. It's, you know, a non 3DS experience in Pokemon. It's going to blow up. It's going to be this huge thing. So uh, the Switch is going to be fine. <laughs> Nintendo lives. They will be fine for the foreseeable future. You know, they got Splatoon 2. They've got arms that they're they're really embracing, which is a quirky little game, but it's actually pretty fun. Uh, and then, uh, what is it? The Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 2? That one, I admit, was the big surprise. The fact that Nintendo kind of started with the sexy and the fact that the, the sexiest characters we saw in an E3 2017 press conference came from Nintendo, I feel like I've fallen into an alternate reality. Like, just fallen through the world and ended up in a secret level where everything is upside down and backward. Like, what? The sexy time in gaming right now is on Nintendo? Where are we? Like, what does that say about our industry? I mean, kudos to Nintendo for continuing to make those iconic characters, even if those shorts were really, really tiny on that character. But between that and Fire Emblem, they're actually making characters that make physical statements that are female and good for them. They are very interesting. Um, one person on Twitter said that they think they just saw... Um, you know, the cosplay of 2017, 2018, and, and they're not wrong. Um, there's there's very little to get excited cosplay-wise outside of Nintendo and some of the, some PlayStation stuff for, for women. Um, so that's basically my thoughts on Nintendo, uh, because there really wasn't very much there. There was a Kirby game, there was a Yoshi game. It feels very, yeah, it's Nintendo kind of thing. Uh, which was, I don't want to say disappointing, because Mario Odyssey looked good. And Mario games, core Mario games, sorry, Mario, sell Nintendo systems. I want to talk about Devolver Digital's presentation now, because this gave me many thoughts and feels. I thought it was funny. Uh, I thought it was a nice skewering, a, a harsh 
skewering of the yearly nonsense that is E3. I was surprised they came out swinging so hard with the unethical business practices comment. The woman that was the main character of that sold it so hard. Her parody of E3 press conferences was actually more compelling and sustained my attention better with that manic, you know, almost aggressive intensity um, than the actual press conferences did this year. A lot of the onstage presence this year was dry as toast. And so they were sort of skewering E3s of years gone by because they couldn't possibly know how boring stuff was going to be this year, right? Right. So that's where things get um, interesting because the people praising the Devolver Digital presentation, outlets like Polygon and things like that, they're the ones not only who were made fun of with those, you're supposed to be your professional journalists comment, but also they're, they're the ones that, you know, have been accused of propping up these, these unethical business practices by focusing more on the, the, uh, identity politics, political elements of gaming and less about the, the business side and, and the consumer advocacy elements. And then you get the violence in the presentation. And if you haven't seen it, it's only 15 minutes long. Go check it out. But, you know, a guy gets his hand. It's all very fake, like trauma style fake violence, but it's still violence. And these are the services that are constantly, games make you sexist, games make you violent. And they're praising this presentation that is using you know, maiming and dumping gamers for sport. Oh, you see what I did there? Um, but I'm ambivalent about it. And I, I don't, I don't want to get that deep. I don't want to overthink it. It's the hypocrisy of the response and the fact that there's sort of a cluelessness of like, all right, we need to lighten up when another publisher is taking the the fair swings at industry practices that the press should be doing, but ain't. That should be a wake up call. But sort of Kotaku and, and Polygon, they both sort of. I mean, Kotaku's gone through a, a change in ownership, so let's give them a bit of a chance. But uh, Polygon just seems really clueless. And not throwing any shade at the individual writers in Polygon, they can't control the coverage that one person did. However, you would think that this would presage a new dawning of awareness in, in games because it, it was sort of, it got a big pop word of mouth wise. They didn't show off that many games but they certainly got some attention for the company, which I think was their intent. And the fact that it ended, and it was very, very fake. Again, it was very, very fake. But with the female host's head exploding, you know, blood coming out of her nose and her head exploding, they have done a lot of hand-wringing over equally silly cartoon violence against women, you know, digital elves being murdered and things like that, that I found it so strange that they were cheering violent acts committed against actual people, even though they cut away and it's clearly a rubber head. There just seems to be a hypocrisy in this response that you're using cheap special effects on real people, that's okay. But expensive special effects against digital people is not okay. This doesn't make any sense to me. And it's so strange to sit here. Again, I, I feel like I'm in Bizarro World where everybody's just sort of with a straight face having this like two thoughts in the, this cognitive dissonance, this, this double think going on in their head regarding this stuff. And it's very curious to me 
it actually like I, I I can't get this out of my head so maybe we can talk more about this on Friday because like I said I don't want to overthink it I, I want to give Devolver credit for going there ouch well done um making fun of like micro microtransactions and and dlc and and too expensive dlc and you know the the idiot comments and and um that kind of stuff good for them good for them i want to praise them and i don't want that to get too lost in my criticizing the response to what they did um i did think the ending could have been funnier but that's nitpicking it was interesting it was some of the old e3 coming into the new e3 and we desperately need that so good job devolver i you guys know i love you uh you give me quite a few games for review um I like your games. You have published small little games of friends of mine. Uh, if you're wondering about the game that they did, it's called Always Sometimes Monsters. Um, it's a little like sprite-based RPG game. You can check it out. Um, uh, but uh, like I said, friend of mine, not an official like professional endorsement. Just hey, you helped out my friend. I think you're cool. Um, but also, you know, the Serious Sam games are great. And Shadow Warriors, I like Wang. I said that. I said I like Wang. Um, but uh, I've been playing a lot of that game Blockhood that I showed you guys a bit. And of, of, and that's a Devolver game as well. So they do good stuff and they seem cool and good for them to go there and, and speak an element of truth to power. And we will talk Friday about um, all things E3 when it wraps. Maybe I will have my top picks of the show uh, I'm hesitant to do that stuff, and I'll, I'll tell you why on Friday, but for now, thanks. Tomorrow, we will be doing some uh, kicky starter stuff for, uh, for those who are backers at certain tiers, and then, of course, Thursdays, Patreon Thursdays, which, if you become a Patreon, you will also get access to next month's, um, backer feedback sessions, so good time to join, even if it's just for a couple months, um, although I would appreciate it if people didn't do that. But, uh, yeah, the hope is that people won't, and they'll see value, and they'll stay on, and all that good stuff. Uh, so, I'm going to sign off now. See you Friday.